Well, hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Satch from Feedback Crunch. I'm gonna do a walkthrough for Webflow and how to use Google Tag Manager to set up your, your events in Google or in Google Analytics and to show conversions so that you can have a really great um, picture for your clients or yourself. And this is meant to be for web developers, um, web designers, anybody who's using Webflow. Now this could also be used for WordPress as well, but I tell you what, I really love Webflow. And we're gonna talk a about a couple of different things here. First of all, I love using Calendly to book appointments rather than just a contact form. We're gonna show how to do that as a conversion in Google Analytics and in Google Ads, and, and how to do that with Google Tag Manager. I'm gonna show you how to make sure that every time somebody clicks um, or fills out any individual form on your website, or anytime that somebody clicks a phone number, anytime somebody clicks your email, any of these bottom funnel conversion actions, we want that to count as a conversion in Google Analytics. And, and real quick, here's why this is powerful. Let's just jump right into it here. Now, um, I know you wanna look at my beautiful face, but I'm gonna do a couple of things. Again, we're gonna talk about Webflow primarily here and how to set yourself up for success. Um, and, and even before I dive in here, here's one of the things that you need to know. If you're setting up websites for your um, other businesses, if you're a web designer, I'm telling you, one of the core things you need to be talking about is what is the capacity for this business? How much business do they want to drive and how are you going to measure that, right? And ideally, you need you should be providing tools to your clients to show them how many phone calls they're getting, how many form fills they're getting, how many times people email them, and then show them tools on how to measure that. Where is that coming from? So that you can prove the results of all of the things that you do. The easiest way to do that, you don't need some third party um, program or anything like that. All you need is Google Analytics and all you need is, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit loud here, all you need is, is the Google Tag Manager with Google Analytics and it's gonna set you up just right. I tell you what, you should be doing this for folks. So real quick, let's dive in here. I know sometimes people complain if I have this in the lower right hand corner. So I tell you what, we're gonna go, um, you're just gonna see my screen here. And so here's what I've done. So I'm gonna show you one of my customers here. So this is a customer, Their Google Analytics is set up. And now remember, whenever you're in Google Analytics, you have your your real time, your audience, which tells you about your your everything from gender to age to geography of your customer. Acquisition is how you got somebody uh, or got a new user or an, an, a new user or a page viewer, whatever it is. Then you have your behaviors, right? And here you could go into behavior site content and you could drill down all your content if you wanted to, which is one of the things I like to do. But really what I like to look at, and your, your customer is going to want to do this, is when you go to acquisition, you go to all traffic, and then if you look at your source mediums uh, and to discover what is actually creating the good stuff on your website. Now for me on my website, my main calls to action, I use a Calendly system, so when you click this Calendly, um, Calendly comes up, you can book on my calendar, you fill out... Uh, the time that you want to meet, you hit confirm, you go through, you add in and, and answer the questions that I've gotten there. And when that's done, I've actually set that up so that that's an event. Uh, the other thing that most of my customers have is that they want to, uh, they'll have buttons. We put buttons on their website for calling f people, right? So if I look at uh, this junk company, for instance, when you hit this call now, all of a sudden that's a conversion. Like we drive tons of at tons and tons of uh uh, traffic there. And if you go to these sub location pages, we've got a phone number here. We actually use a Calendly or a call rail phone number to track that. And then you can hit get a quote now. The quote pops up. If you fill out, that's actually a HubSpot form as well. When you fill those forms out, those are all things that are going to trigger an event. So here I've got a customer. And over the last 30 days, I'm able to see a couple of things here. So first of all, when I go into acquisition, all traffic, source medium, I can see how much, how many users are coming from organic SEO. I can look at, and this is feedback. Sorry, let's look at this customer here. Um, acquisition, let's go to source medium. And we can see how many people are coming from AdWords, pay-per-click advertising, how many just go directly. These two are kind of combined together. But now look at over here. I've got goals set out and I can sort to show you by my goal conversion what has the highest conversion rate? I can show you which one has the most goal completion. So here for Google AdWords, we had 460 um, conversions just from Google AdWords. We had 
about 100 and 122 from people just typing in our website. We had 44 from organic. We've got 18 from direct. They're not super clean here. This direct, these are probably connected here. Bing, we had 12 conversions and it goes on and on. Well, you wanna set this up so that it makes sense. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use Google Tag Manager and, what, and we're gonna take those actions, we're gonna make them into events in Google Analytics, and then we're gonna take those events and make them into goals on uh, in Google Analytics. And by making them into goals, you'll be able to come look here or you can go into the conversions, you can look at goals, and you can even look at like the reverse path to show how people are getting there. And we use a lot of UTM codes and there was a bunch of ugly ones set up before I got there. But uh, long story short, we're gonna show you how to do this for your clients. So right off the bat, let's dive into what's called Google Tag Manager. If you've never been to Google Tag Manager, head up here when you're in analytics and it's right here, Google Tag Manager. They have optimized data studio and surveys. I really spend a lot of time in Tag Manager and in data studio. In fact, just take a look at this. This is I try and make life really easy for my customers so that they can see what's happening. Here's a data studio report that breaks down by day each critical action. So here's our daily spend in Google Ads. We've got our conversion rates. I have your actual cost per conversions. You've got total conversions. Each campaign ad group, we've got different metrics. You go on and on and on. You can create these in, in Data Studio, but what we're gonna look at is Tag Manager. So if you hit Google Tag Manager, um, I'm gonna show you in Google Tag Manager, uh, you're gonna come here and you're gonna have to actually create a new account. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll just create a dummy account. You hit Create Account, um, and we'll do one for a customer I know that's coming up here. And, we're gonna type in your name and then you're gonna say, I'm gonna deploy this for web, okay? And essentially what's gonna happen is you agree to give all their data information to Google, yada, 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 and you're gonna get two pieces of code here. So we have this in the head and then this in the body. So in Webflow, where you're gonna put this is when you come to your um, project, I'll just do this in my own here. When you, yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna go to the designer, you're gonna go to the settings and under settings, you're gonna go to custom code so let's go there, project settings. Let's go to custom code over here. And that first part of this tag, we're gonna take this part and put it in the head. And then in the footer code, we grab the second part, right? So now we've got both parts of that in there. And so now Google Tag Manager is set up properly, right? I actually gotta make sure I've got this right in my own site. I just converted to a new site we're totally different than we've been before. Um, I'm one of those guys, you know, you, you neglect your own stuff just a little bit. So I'm just gonna check on my own. I go to uh, admin here, and I'm gonna go to the install tag manager, and I just wanna make sure I get the feeling that this footer doesn't look right. That's why I'm looking here. I don't know that this is right. Google tag manager that, end and begin Google tag manager. I kind of feel like this isn't done right. I think I screwed up. So I just I just took what I had on my old site and put it here and I kind of think it wasn't set up right. Anyways, let's proceed. Now the cool thing about Google Tag Manager is you're gonna be able to deploy everything from um, Google Analytics to a whole bunch of other, now I'm gonna publish this real quick so it takes. So once you get that set up, you hit next, all of a sudden you're gonna come to this, this workspace. I'm gonna show you the first tags that you should be setting up. Now, if you haven't created a Google Analytics account, do that already. Let's just assume that you're getting it set up and you've created one and eventually you're gonna put in your name and everything, you're gonna to go to property settings and you're gonna have this UID. So when you first get Google Tag Manager, the, I'm gonna move quick here. Okay guys, buckle up. We're gonna hammer through this fast because I want to actually add value for it. Uh, you can pause and come back to this if you want to. But first thing, whenever you get Google Tag Manager, we gotta go in and we're gonna add tags. So there's two things in here. There's triggers and tags. Um, now, what we want is every time a page load, we wanna launch a Google Analytics um, base pixel. So I always hit new. And when the new comes up, I, I uh, you go to the tag configuration. Now yours will look different when you first do it. You're gonna add a Google Analytics universal ID you're gonna select the tracking type as a page view because what we're doing is every time a page is viewed, we wanna send a signal to your actual analytics account. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to hit new variable 
And when you do new variable, you're going to have to come over here and you grab your tracking ID. Your tracking ID for analytics is you go down to admin here, you go to property settings, and you grab this tracking ID. And what you're going to do is take that tracking ID, put it right there. I usually save it as that name so you know what you're doing. And now we have a Google Analytics event tied to our tracking ID. So every time a, a page view is viewed, we're connecting to this. Now what we want to do is we want to trigger it with all page. And so once you select all pages, um, basically every time any page is loaded, you're loading that base. Now what you do is you'd hit submit and basically we're gonna save this. So that's the first thing is to get Google Analytics, hit submit, name it, so analytics, and hit publish and all of a sudden you'll be published, okay? I didn't make any changes, so I just published for no reason. Here's, you're gonna have a, an audit trail of everything that's been done. Now you're gonna go back to workspace. So now the first thing we did is we, we set up Google Analytics to actually work. Now let's head to our website and let's take a look at the things that we want for sure. Now, I use Calendly. It's the best 12 bucks a month you can spend. Get the professional. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up Calendly so that it actually, um, when, when somebody fills it out, it sends over into Google Analytics automatically. So in Calendly, I think you have to have the Pro, which I think is 12 bucks a month, totally worth it. Go to integrations and what you're gonna do is you're gonna search for analytics. You get, find the analytics and you're gonna manage the integration and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in that same analytics ID in there and hit save and now your integration is set up. And I just did this with my account. So basically what'll happen now is when you come in, I'm gonna look at real time in my analytics because this is something I just did 20 minutes ago. I'm gonna go to real time and events. So anything that happened today or in the last hour or minutes, you go to real time. I'm gonna look at events and essentially I'm gonna say in the last 30 minutes, Here's my tests I now have. Whenever you have an event, now there's a, a difference here real quick. There's a little bit of a difference between Google Analytics events and Google Analytics conversions, okay? So we're using Google Tag Manager, which has a trigger. We're gonna do this in a minute. The trigger is gonna send to Google Analytics an event. We're gonna name the event, and there's kind of this labeling system to events that you're gonna to wanna to see. You have a category, an action, and then a label. A category, action, in fact here, we've got the event category, the event action, and then there, there can be a label here. But the category that comes automatically from Calendly is called Calendly, okay? So um, what we're gonna do, we've got that event. Um, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to take and set up each one of these events to make sure that they're working, and then we're gonna come in and uh, actually get them humming so that they're a conversion or a goal as well, okay? So real quick, you, you do this Calendly integration, you'll come through and actually do a Calendly conversion, so click and, and you have to actually have the, the event happen first, right? So that's the first thing that you'll wanna do. Um, now the second thing is, is let's, let's just say I have a phone number here. Now all of my phone numbers, I do this the same way across all of my websites. On, on these guys, we've, we've got these phone numbers here, and if you mouse over it, you'll see that I put the phone number there, but when you click, I'm doing a link, and that link is going to, uh, it's a click to link, and I do, it, the command for that real quick is T-E-L, so you put in a hyperlink, just like instead of going to a web page, I'm doing T-E-L colon, and then plus one in the, in the phone number. Now I have a, a way that I do it, so it's always the same. So let's just imagine here, if you call me, if I click that right now, boom, it's saying making a call. I just screwed with it and said that there was a conversion. Um, but essentially, if you look here, the hyperlink, if I right click this and I say copy link address, you will see that new document, let's just paste it in. I always do my stuff here, I go make plain text. So you'll see that the hyperlink that I'm going to, real quick, come on, it's not gonna zoom way in, that's really annoying, there we go, is T-E-L colon plus. When I click that on a phone, it will actually click through and it will work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Google Tag Manager. So first off, in, in your actual, um, on your site, you would actually make that as a link. So if I come into to the designer, um, you know how to do hyperlinks. We're not gonna focus on this too much. But here's a little quick note, something that I've noticed. Now my contact page I know isn't beautiful. Um, and I think there was a thing I wanted to change on there. So maybe we'll look at that. So contact page. 
somewhere in here is the contact at 9 million pages coming up here. So um, essentially what I've done is I've come down to this part and I've created a hyperlink. Now when you do these hyperlinks, I actually use the URL and I type it in. It does the same thing if you hit phone, but what I've found is that by I do this consistently across every site exactly the same way. I type TEL colon plus one and then the phone number without any dashes. Because what I want is I've got some, um, if, if you go here, it gets a little different, but it's essentially doing that same thing. So long story short, that's how I do it. Again, here for an email, um, so what it's, I don't know why I do this, but for some reason, I just like to uh, control my own world. So you could hit email, right? But I've found that, I don't know, I just do it consistently. So mail to colon, boom. Um, and then I do it all lowercase all the time. Like I just have a, a system that I'm always the same in, okay? Now I don't want that to be purple. I want that to be just the normal color that we always have, which this is kind of annoying that you have to do that. You tell it again, boom, and maybe we get rid of the formatting. So now if you click that, it's gonna try and email me. And if you click down here, it's gonna try and, and, and get me going. So, or it's, <laughs> it's gonna call me. It's gonna get me going, that, that doesn't make any sense. All right, so uh, here's what we're gonna do. So come into Google Tag Manager, now we're gonna do these triggers, okay? So the first thing, let's let's create a new trigger and uh, even before we do triggers, we gotta add the ability or a variable to be able to do this. So come to variables and hit configure and the things you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you load in here for sure are click target URL, I turn on all the clicks and I turn on all the forms, but the one I really like to use is form ID and click URL. Those are gonna be form ID and click URL are the two main things. So once you add those variables, now you can use them as triggers, okay? So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit new and we're gonna call, let's just call this one. So phone, click, call, and I even, eh. Sometimes I will even put like 1952208073. And now I know exactly. So now what I'm going to do is the trigger is going to be let's do a just clicks because we're clicking something here. And we're going to do some clicks. Now you have all these variables. I'm going to go click URL equals T E L colon plus one. Nine five two two zero zero eight zero seven three. Okay, so basically what we've said is let we've created a trigger where when you click a URL that equals ex, so when you do equals it's exactly that. Um, sometimes if you have a bunch of phone numbers you might do contains t e l colon plus whatever. There's different ways to do this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit save. Now I'm not going to hit save because I've actually already done this one. So call. We'll look at, so the call equals that. So that's the first one. Now let's do one where um, a form is filled out or let's do the, the email first. So emailed me, click or email click, whatever you wanna call it, right? Stay organized. So again, I do just links, some links, link URL or click URL equals mail to colon, Rob at feedbackrench.com. So now there's a trigger where if you click a link that says that, that trigger is gonna be fired. Now all we're doing is saying, hey, what, what's gonna trigger it? Now the tag will be, this is what to do. So it's if this, then tag. So let's do, let's do one more here. Um, let's do a form ID. Now one of the things I love about Webflow is that it's clean, it's sexy, it works really well. Let's go over here. So here's a little secret. If you go into a form, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna grab a thing called the form ID. And each form you have has a form ID to it. If you are in WordPress, it is a sloppy, disgusting mess and it's really frustrating to do. What I'm gonna show you here is how easy it is to grab the form ID and basically every time this form ID fires, that's gonna be a conversion. Now, I have it so that my designer is often reusing the same form ID name um, so that I don't have to create a bunch of these. Uh, there is a tag in here that says trigger when all forms go. I haven't had good luck with that on WordPress. I haven't had good luck with that on Webflow. I really don't recommend it. I recommend doing a distinct trigger when people fill out a form that's a form ID. So that's what we're gonna do here. 
So here's how you find that. Okay, open it up in Chrome. I always do everything in Chrome. Go to the in a form. Go to the first thing and or the first form field, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to inspect. Now, what's beautiful about WordPress is, so here we can see this is the parent and here are the child's right. So the parent is form ID equals, and we can see right here in between the parentheses is my form ID. So form ID equals, and then in parentheses, this one's WF-form. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna create a trigger, and I, I didn't do that yet. So here I'm gonna say contact page form, and I'll even put that there so I know what I'm doing. And now, um, so let, now let's choose the trigger type. So, or let's choose the type of trigger. It's gonna be a form submission. Now in form, we're gonna say not all forms. All forms doesn't work, don't do that, that is bad. You will get in trouble. Go to some forms, click, and now let's select form ID, cause that's the thing, and then we're gonna say it equals, and paste it in there. Now a couple things you'll wanna do is make sure you don't put the parentheses, but we're gonna take what was in between the parentheses here of the form ID, okay? So again, form ID, equals that. So now when that form is filled out, that trigger is going to fire. Um, now I know I've got a couple other forms in here. So let's go take a look at them real quick. I think on my homepage, I've got one that's a little bit different. And uh, I, I just love our site. We're building it all out right now. We've got all sorts of cool things happening. I love our, our review snap. And I love, I'm really falling in love with our site. I'm sure you think yours is better. And that's fine. But I like mine. So here's Here's a little case study one. So down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Go to the first one, hit inspect, and then come over here. And in the parent, I got form ID, WF-lead magnet. So I'm gonna call this one a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna do new again. So form lead magnet, boom. Now this is lead magnet one. Again, let's go to form submission, some forms, Form ID equals boom, 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 okay? So now we're setting up these triggers. Now I'm not gonna waste our time and go through every single one of these, but here's what I'll tell you. Stick to the stuff that matters. Don't, you know, you can make buttons a trigger. That's fine. We can do some interesting stuff with buttons. There are video triggers so that you could show whenever a, a certain amount of, uh, information is viewed through a YouTube that's embedded. There's a whole bunch of different triggers you can create. I focus on making money for customers, okay? I want phone calls, I want form fills, and that's the main thing, right? So so let's jump in here. Now I'm gonna do some, some uh, stuff to send to analytics for this to be a form, and then we're gonna have that be a goal or a conversion. So let's jump back in. Um, so let's complete this a little bit. So, <clears throat> all right. So now we have these different triggers. Now, none of these are actually actively working. I have to submit and and let's just call it triggers added. Now I could go in and keep good notes because I'm a great organized web person, but not right now because it's my own stuff. So, all right, now we got these triggers. Now let's head to the tags. Um, I'm actually going to eliminate, I had one made here that I'm gonna delete because I was using a thank you page until I found out that Calendly is done a different way. I didn't know that you had to do an integration. The thank you page wasn't gonna work. Um, one way you can do conversions is that you could um, have, you fill out a form, you redirect to forward slash thank you dash lead magnet, right? And that whenever that page loads, that's a conversion. But what I've found is sometimes you go to that page, you load it and, and it just triggers funny. It's not perfect, it's not horrible, but I prefer doing it this way. So. All right, so now let's take a look. Uh, we've got our triggers made. I've got my analytics code already in there. Um, I'm gonna delete this guy because that doesn't work. Um, again, I'm getting rid of these Calendly ones. So let's do the telephone. So new, my kids are gonna bust in here. So we're gonna do analytics. I always start with the analytics phone click. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna, we'll select the trigger down here, but now we're gonna say what's actually gonna fire. Let's fire and using the analytics tag and instead of page view like we did that first one, we're gonna make an event, okay? And event, now we get to label it. Again, if you remember earlier, I said that um, 
events always have, there's three ways to label them. You have the category, the event, and then there's this uh, label. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do category. I'm gonna just call it phone, right? Phone, and I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna name them all. And then I, I like to label them a little different though. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna label it to the referrer because I like to see where things come from for my customers. It's kind of interesting. Value, I could put a value in there. I don't do that for this stuff. I'd rather, I don't know, some people do. And then what you, I, I just ignore the interaction hit and then select your UA. So now we've set up, hey, in, in this Google Analytics, we're gonna create an event called phone category, action phone, and then we're gonna label it a little different. I'm usually looking at categories and action. So now what we'll do is we'll come down here and how is this gonna trigger? We're gonna pick the trigger that we made the call trigger, right? So now if we hit submit or we hit save, when that call trigger is hit, that'll work. Now we're gonna create another one and I'm gonna call this form um, contact page. Come over here, Google Analytics event again but now i'm going to say form and then i'm going to say contact page form and just so i remember how this is spelled i'm going to screenshot that quick again i like to label it i'll be able to see where that came or i'll, I'll, I'll see some information about where that came from value i leave it but select the google analytics id and then come on to the bottom down to trigger and we're going to say where's that form so here's my contact page form so whenever that's done, boom, the contact page form is done. Now I'm gonna do my, my uh, now this is a specific lead magnet. I'm gonna be changing the names of the lead magnets over time, because um, we're gonna have a bunch of them in here. And I don't know, I don't wanna get it, I haven't thought this one all the way through. You know, I've got a newsletter down there. Um, here's the lead magnet type of deal. So, you know, this is a, a review video that I have that I want people to watch. So. Um, we'll do review, lead, uh, whatever. We'll call it something, okay? So form lead magnet one, right? Stay organized, get a scheme for it. I'm probably doing this stupidly. You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, there's better ways to do this. But um, lead magnet one and then label, refer. I just choose refer. You could put the, the page URL in there. You could... You can do all sorts of crap, whatever you want. Um, UA dash, and then the trigger, I'm gonna use that form lead magnet, okay? So as I'm building all these out, they're not live until I hit submit. So now what I've got is the analytics code over here, which is on all pages. I've got a Facebook pixel on all pages that I did earlier. Analytics phone click, so we've got it, when you hit that phone link, that works that way. Contact page form, form lead form and these are analytics you can kind of say them by the type here right so um, here are my analytics events that are happening and we've still got one other one that we might want to put in there right we had that email one so let's do one more we'll do analytics <laughs> analytics email event um, this one's not as big because whatever people spam email email refer the label you there's there's other best practices there i just do it this way am i going to say it every time anyways now the trigger is when you click my email email click i got little kids having drama queen problems out there so what we just did there was um we've created up all these triggers and all this firing and we're going to hit submit and we'll say analytics events created all right Boom, we're going to submit and get going here. All right, so once we've launched that, now let's actually go to the site. Let's refresh it for just a second. Now, it's always goofy because I'm half logged into the to the editor, but here's what we're going to do. Let's let's actually fire some of these triggers, all right? So uh, I want them to be on there. I always make them fire once. So we will go down to the bottom and we'll say uh, Rob. We'll do Rob at Feedback Ranch. So we'll view the case study, boom, and then let's go to my contact page, which I think I got rid of. That's kind of funny. Um, forward slash contact. Uh, that's not it. Where's my contact page? Maybe I should have the contact page up there. Um, contact page. We'll try this one. 
Big Rob Satrum, first choice. Oh, I haven't changed that. I want a website. Boom, submit. There's that. Let's click the, ah, click the phone number once. And let's just do that. So now what we should see over here is we should be able to come and see in the last couple seconds there should have been a series of events or there's a series of page views let's go to events here and go down to oh, that didn't work it appears it didn't work it appears that it is being dumb we let's try that one more time let's make sure i've got it hold on all right so uh because i was in the editor it was kind of goofy i had to open an incognito window but here i just drove by and shove through all these conversions. And basically what I'm trying to do is I want to know how they're actually, what they're called, right? And I'm going to take a quick little, ah, quick little screenshot of this. And uh, just so that I have it, we're just going to have it open here. So now what we're going to do, we've got events, but when they're events, they don't quite fully give me all the information I want. So again, I've got email, the phone, the calendar, the form, and when it came to forms, um, all I got was the contact page form, right? Um, there was one other form, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that for now. So now what we're going to do, this one's kind of goofy. We're going to go over and we're going to add these as goals. And we're going to turn on the goals. And then you get a little bit better information. So, all right, buckle up. We're getting here, okay? We're going to head down to admin, okay? We're going to go to admin and we're going to go to goals, over under the view and we're going to open up the goal and I'm going to turn this one off and here's what we're going to do. We're going to say new goal and we're going to use these events that are occurring to trigger a goal. So under goal setup, I usually just do custom. I hit continue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say phone, <laughs> right? And I'm going to, so basically we're going to use an event to trigger that goal. Okay. So you're going to be given this number, number two. So I'm going to call it phone. We're going to hit event. So when an event happens, now we're going to declare what that event is. So hit next. And what we're going to do is the category. I want to spell this exactly and make sure that it's right. Okay. So I have this open over here. I can see that phone with a capital P is the category that I want. Okay. So I just ke I keep life pretty simple. I would suggest doing the same. So phone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just hit verify this goal. Um, a lot of times this doesn't work, but I'm going to hit save. And now that's been created as a goal. So let's go through. We're going to add the other events. So add new goal. Again, I like to just do custom. We're going to say this is a cont uh, contact page form. And that's done by an event. We're going to hit continue. Now, the, now, here what I want to do is I want to use a little bit more discrete one, and I'm going to use the action. So they were all, both my forms were form categories, but more distinctly I have action label. So it's contact page form. I'm making sure that's spelled right. That's correct. I can verify that. I'm going to hit save. And now I've got contact page form. We're going to continue through a couple more here. So... I, I am going to make that Calendly one. I know that Calendly, if you if you remember over here on my screenshot that I looked at in an event, I have a Calendly category spelled just like that that I'm going to use as a Calendly book. Let's do custom again. Hit continue. So Calendly. And we're going to do that as an event. So whenever this event triggers, um, and again, Calendly. Verify, save. Um, then last, so we got phone. Now let's do that email one. I don't know how good the email one is. Sometimes that gets a little dicey. Custom, continue, email, event. What did I call that? I think it was just email. We'll do category email, whatever. I'm not as concerned about that one. Hit save. So boom, now what we've done is we have made it and now you want to turn them all on, okay? So have those on, and that's kind of a cool thing. Now, let's do one more here, because there is a little, a little goal that I have that I think is kind of interesting. And I don't know if it's a goal, but it's an event. So come over into Google Tag Manager, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to do variables, and we're going to do video. So configure, go down to video. I put a ton of video stuff 
on my website. You also have scroll depth threshold or units or scroll direction, percent visible on screen duration, right? So here's a, let's do some interesting things here. Let's go to, let's create a little trigger and we'll do, um, let's do a two minute duration. Ah, uh, forget that. Basically, let's do video view two minutes. Okay, let's come down here. We'll go uh, user engagement YouTube video, um, and they start it. Ah, wait, that's not the one I want. I want video. Where is it? Oh, I didn't add it, did it? Um, all right, so I just goofed up here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a uh, YouTube video, so we're gonna use that trigger. I'm gonna call this 50% of a video, YouTube video, and then go down to progress here, and we can do time thresholds in seconds. Actually, let's do that, yeah. So I like two minute video watch on a YouTube, on the youtube -age. Come down here, time threshold, I'm gonna do 120 seconds, and yeah, on all videos, let's let's do that. And so any YouTube videos, they start it or they progress for 120 minutes. I think that's kind of a cool win. I don't know about you, but I, I kind of want to know when that happens, right? So let's just do that. All right, so back to here. Let's do a little tag. And all we'll do is we'll make a analytics event, uh, analytics two minute video tag let's make a little let's make a little event here boom event and we'll do video and two minute video and now all will be well because i will know how many times somebody watched at least two minutes worth of video which i think is kind of cool um you know you can you can track that so that's a little bonus thing here guys all right let's hit submit Triggers, whatever you want to name it, label it, keep organized. That's going to help you big time here. But here's the bottom line. Now what's going to happen is as that stuff occurs, you're going to be able to come over and sort. You, know, you can go to your acquisition, go to all traffic, go to source medium. And now because you made them events, and then you made those events and you made them goals, you can come here and you can say, hey, what's driving all the Calendly clicks, right? What, what acquisition is doing that or what uh, pay, you can even come down to uh, behavior and go to each page, site content, content drill down. You can start looking at and show uh, that didn't work, but you can make some reports. You, I think you gotta customize it. Um, anyways, you can start showing some of your conversions, landing pages, exit pages. So it, it's super encouraging to be able to do that. You can go to just the conversions here and you can start looking at which goals are actually happening, goal URLs, where are the goals occurring. And uh, yeah, it's kind of helpful. It helps you understand what's going on in your business, how things are going. You should be doing this for your customers. Webflow is better than every other tool. You should be using Webflow. Um, like and subscribe to this if this is helpful. God bless. I'm going to go spend the weekend with my kids here uh, and my wife and have a ton of fun. So take care. God bless.